I found it. Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And today I wanted to do a writing vlog, but in a way that's a little bit different than usual. Also, I have a Zelda on my lap. Hello. So when I did that unpopular opinions video, I got a lot of responses regarding word count. And I think the overall consensus generally is do what works for you. And if word counts motivate you to write, use them. But there was a lot of pushback to that, just generally thinking AuthorTube is overrun by word count. So I thought we would try something today where I take you through a standard writing vlog, but I in no way count my progress. Does that make sense? I also have a Twitch stream in a little bit and about 47 minutes. And I'm gonna challenge them on stream as well. So the goal is that as we do our writing sprints, no one can then report back at the end with the word count they get. That's gonna be the attempt. I'm excited to see how people share their progress when it's not word count based. So anyways, let me take you back to what I did uh, before we got here <laughs> earlier this morning. That's a better way to say that, yes. What do you think, baby girl? Oh yeah, hi. Hello, you're so cute. 
And now, here we are with 45 minutes until the writing stream. <laughs> I've had a headache the past two days, um, so this is the first time that I'm kind of getting back into work, and my plan is to uh, take it kind of easy. And I think that's in part why tracking right now um, and not doing that is going to be really fun. What is it? Like, how do I focus on this white cat? My camera is trying. Hi, baby girl. I love you too. You gonna lick my hair? You gonna groom me a little bit? Do I need it? We can do it. Oh, a brave fin. Oh, stretch. Good job. So my plan is to take it easy, but I think this is going to be the true test because on that unpopular opinions video, I said that when I'm by myself, I don't often track in a word count way. I just kind of sit down and write and it's whatever. You know, sometimes when I've gotten really in the zone uh, and like, you know, an hour or something has passed by and I don't even realize it, it's fun to look up and just see how much progress I've made. But that doesn't always even have to be like the word count number. It can just be visually on my word processor. I'm like, oh shit. So with all that said, I think it's time to figure out which project I want to work on. And I think Rather than a writing project right now, I'm going to pull up my horror anthology thing that I'm doing for a Patreon experiment. So I am getting feedback in now um, and I just want to vlog all of that. So what I actually need to do, I'm realizing, is um, have a section on if I receive their feedback. I'm gonna talk in a later video about how I set up all of this. Um, but anyways, time to get to locking. <laughs> Okay, so we have uh, over a day left um, for people to get me their feedback, but this is what we're looking at right now. So that is very cool. My plan is, besides going through the individual feedback, obviously, but I wanted to make a kind of section for, uh, you know, the main feedback, but keep it on the spreadsheet and then keep all the little stuff in the individual Google Docs. I've been watching Alexa's reaction <laughs> to the unpopular opinions um, or her reaction to the opinions, not to my video necessarily, but it is so good. While I attempt to clean up my shelves and then a spook up on my shelves. To be fair, they are blessed with Frankie all year. I added the skull. I always have my little Mickey. So anyways, we're going to clean it up. And now it is time. Yeah. Hello! I'm trying to use it with magic. This is my intention. Well, I'm gonna be honest, this is unfortunate no matter how you look. <laughs> Can I get y'all? closer. I can't. All right, well, you're gonna have to trust me. I'm gonna put my finger down on where I think it is. Um, yes, this is it. So, uh-huh. Um, well, I hope you guys are ready. Yeah. We went five to 80 real quick. <laughs> Let me know. You gotta come up with another way. It'll be very fun. 
<laughs> uh, Luge finished two chapters and I'm close to entering Act 3. That's phenomenal. Um, Alvin got both two formatted, including fonts, spacing and gutters, packing, including medicines, and even got some cleaning done. Way to go! Oh my gosh, Lauren! I'm getting so much closer to this first kiss. I can feel it. Heck yes! Welcome to Yoga with Adrian. I'm Adrian and I'm here. Hi, Adrian. <laughs> I should say before I get to the new project that I got a decent way through this fourth chapter. I think my plan is going to be to maybe finish it up tonight, if I can, maybe tomorrow, um, with a glass of wine. Yeah, and then send it over to my brother. But I do want to make a new one. Sometimes I just like blank Scrivener documents. And that's what we're going to do this time. Short stories because all great ideas come to you when you're in the shower. I realized that I never wrote the idea that I got when I was um, listening to Chuck's book. So I figured I would go back through and listen to that. Oh, I did get the books uh, in the mail the other day. So some new additions to my writing craft shelf. Also, I found this at Half Price Books for two bucks and I thought it was so fun. It's the third edition. So anyways, I figured I'd grab it. But I have uh, some incomprehensible notes to myself in order to uh, work on that, so. This one's interesting because I have um, not what's going to be the ultimate final line, but basically the concept of the final line. So I'm working toward that. Uh, and my whole shtick with this one that I want to play around with is not having any dialogue. So let's do it. All right. And I basically have um, three spots that I need to fill in and a lot of this was like emotion based so I want to get more concrete on the next draft but like for now it is accomplishing what I hoped it would so spell serenity correctly I'm going to save this and as it is 355 on a Friday I think I'm gonna call it done for now till my glass of wine later <laughs> my trash. So I'm adding this little bit of the bookshelves that I'm rearranging again, this time by rainbow, uh, because I didn't have any other vlog to put it on. <laughs> but also I just kind of want to talk through what I did manage to accomplish, quote unquote, that Friday of not tracking anything and also how I felt about it while vlogging and how the stream felt. So I, I had kind of like an evolution as it went along, right? So initially I found it weird. Editing back the footage, it was more clear to me that I didn't talk about my projects as much because figuring out exactly what to say to explain what I'd accomplished was harder when I was like, when I didn't have the crutch of, oh, I got 600 words of doing XYZ. I don't know why the word count tends to be the like trigger point to explain what was in those 600 words when I could just like not include that of course and I have tons of vlogs where I'm just talking through the problem but for some reason it there was like a disconnect there until I did the short story. So basically the D&D novelization, I finished episode four or chapter four, though it still needs to be fully revised and edited. So we did that 80 minute sprint during the Twitch stream, which was insane. But I finished off the chapter with a little bit of uncertainty on if I like how it ended. Do I want to end off the chapter this way or back up self-awareness line or add one last funny quip here? There's a whole host of yellows and blues and more yellows and more blues, of course, as I know that this needs some improvements. But it is nice to have everything done. I'm finding myself with the D&D novelization. I say that the notes acts as like my zero draft and it does. Um, maybe it's just speeds up the process between first and second draft because I'm able to get the 
crux of everything down then when I go back over it it's just already all I need is improving. There's been a few times where I have to rethink what worked in game versus what worked you know for the viewer reader um, and I have found that kind of upping the narrator's voice and kind of making fun of my two main <laughs> terrible characters can help with that um, but it's just that's the kind of thing I'm playing around with here which is very fun. Basically our two main characters, VM and Serafina, are being, this proposition the word I want to use here, they're being bribed, they're being <laughs> blackmailed ever so slightly, but like the person doing it is not very effective, especially because again, these two characters are kind of assholes. And so this is a dynamic that is going to continue on for the next, I don't know, five or six episodes. This other halfling kind of, um, trying to get them to work with her, help her out. Uh, and obviously because these are two little buddy thieves, they need something that they're gonna get. So we're on this journey for the Zeppel Crested Rubies. And uh, yeah, there's promises potentially of finding another one. Once again, it's kind of fun. I can't do a whole lot of foreshadowing because I have not played, we've we played nine sessions, right? So it's freeing in some ways. I'm not trying to allude to anything great. I think that's why this episodic nature fits perfectly for this D&D novelization. But anyways, so I've, we've now basically just set up this next kind of arc for them and that's very fun. Then I finished the first draft of that short story zero draft more so. I really wanted to play around with the idea of not using dialogue just because I because I write romance a lot and because I write contemporary a lot I find that dialogue is one of my favorite things but I also you know want to stretch myself as a writer and so I want to be able to convey the same feelings and meanings and thoughts without any character having to explicitly state it and I find that short stories are a really good way to play around with these little things, right? And so it's kind of perfect. I think that as I did this zero draft, you know, I learned some things along the way about these two sisters that I didn't know beforehand. And I think I went a little bit farther than I wanted to. Like I'm gonna need to pull it back a bit on the like intensity of the emotions because I want it kind of be understated. Uh, but obvious to the reader, if that makes any sense. But anyways, I'm excited to play around with that more. I'm wanting to do like a short story challenge uh, and a little bit like next month uh, September. So I think this might be the first one that I kind of focus in on and see if I can do it. It's also maybe even more like a flash fiction. I'll have to look up the like the standards for stuff. It's it's gonna be quite short. Like I can't imagine it being more than 2000 words. So I guess it is technically still a short story. I don't know, but no, I'm not supposed to be talking about words. What am I doing? Anyway, so while vlogging, I found it hard to talk about what I was doing for some reason without the prompt of sharing how I did during that sprint or those couple hours or whatever. Um, but obviously now it's no problem to talk about it. So it's just kind of rethinking, rewiring how I share on vlogs. It was so fun during the Twitch stream because I feel like I found out a lot more about people's stories than I did before. You know, some people on streams are really good about sharing where they're at, um, but others, you know, you're just sharing the word count and that's fine too, if that's what you wanna do, right? Um, but I feel like I got a snippet of stuff, um, which was just, it made me so much more intrigued. It was so cool. And I think I'm gonna do this maybe like once a week, once every two weeks going forward, just have a day where it's like no sharing word counts. But now I guess my question is for you guys, besides my, uh, inability to share during the actual vlogging process. I'm curious what the experience was for you as viewers not hearing about the word counts. Like was that kind of, did it, did you like that better? Um, did it have no effect? Did my explaining how I did now uh, change anything? <laughs> Let me know. Yes. But that is gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Alex Bowen, John Eric L. Swigart, Todd Wonders, Nicole Swedberg, Sharon Muha, Gordon Tillman, and Aaron Owens. And I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. Oh, you gotta stretch too, baby girl. Aw, yeah, you look like a long girl like that. Hi, sausage. Oh. Oh, hi. <laughs>